All right, in this video, I'm going to work some of these problems that you can see in front of you here. Um, our formula is Q is equal to MC delta T. Um, if you're watching with me from the state of North Carolina, then your reference table gives you C sub P, but it still means the same thing as just a plain old C. I have the breakdown of the formula in front of you. Use the power of video, pause if you need to in order to look at this. But you can see that Q stands for heat, and there are two possible units of that. You have joules or calories. M stands for mass, and it has to be measured in grams. This is a capital C, and capital C stands for specific heat. There are two possible units, joules per gram degree Celsius or calories uh, per gram degree Celsius. Which of those two that you pick? depends entirely upon whether or not you have heat measured in joules or calories. You need the two to match up. I need joules and joules or calories and calories. And then temperature has to be measured in degrees Celsius since in both of the specific heats I have degrees Celsius. And this actually stands for change in temperature. I should have written that in there in marker. We'll add it in pen. Change in temperature. And change in temperature stands for TF or T final minus T initial. It's very important that you get these two in the proper places because, for example, if I have something like um, 20 minus 80, that's going to give me a negative value, whereas 80 minus 20 is going to give me a, a positive value. So it's, it's rather important that you get them in the right order. Um, if something is cooling down, then it would make sense that you would end up with a negative number because it's giving off heat. Whereas if it's warming up, you should end up with a positive number because it's going to be gaining heat. The problems that I'm going to work in this video are just very simple um, thermochemical calculations. And like I said, we're going to work off of this formula right here. Um, there's going to be nothing fancy or tricky about these. Each one's a little bit different than the one before. So the first problem says, what is the specific heat of a substance that has a mass of 25 grams and requires 525 calories to raise its temperature by 15 degrees Celsius? My first recommendation is always going to be that you make a list. So if I go through my numbers, it says, what is the specific heat? So I know already they want me to find C. And it says it has a mass, that's M, of 25.0 grams, and it requires 525.0 calories. Well, I recognize from my list over here that calories measures heat. So that's going to be Q. And it needs to raise its temperature by 15 degrees Celsius. Well, some people are going to freak out over the fact that it doesn't give me an initial and a final temperature because didn't you tell me right here it was final minus initial? It does, but if they don't tell me what its starting temperature is, they just tell me the overall change. It, if it's raised by 15 degrees, this is delta T. I don't need a final and an initial. They've actually saved me some work and given me a delta T. So we're going to plug this into this formula right here. So my Q is going to go first. Q is equal to MC delta T. I'll just rewrite it. My Q, based on my list, is 525.0 calories. My M is 25.0 grams. My C is what I'm solving for. And then my T is 15 oops, 0 0.0 degrees Celsius. Now, I have many students that are struggling at this point to do the math of this. It's the algebra that's killing you. Um, I would personally be putting this into my calculator, but some of you, quite frankly, need to simplify. And I'm going to simplify this side first to show you what I'm talking about. Um, I'll have 525.0 calories. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do 25 times 15 that's 375. Uh, the grams and the degrees Celsius don't go anywhere. They don't cancel out, so that just they stay in there. 375 grams times degrees Celsius times the letter C. Well, now I need to get this C all by its lonesome, which means over here I'm multiplying by this number. Then I need to divide both sides 
by grams times degree Celsius. So divide both sides by 375 grams times degree Celsius and solve for C. And I have many students who are refusing to show this much work on their paper. They set it up correctly up here, but then they end up with the wrong answer because they flip this and get 375 on top or they multiply somehow instead of dividing and you know it's, it's worth a little bit of work. The C comes out in my calculator to be 1.4 but this has three or four sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. My answer needs three. My units are right here. Nothing canceled. So the unit of this is calories over grams times degree Celsius. There's my answer. <laughs> Another attempt at this. All right. It says, suppose 100 grams of water. Well, for my list, mass is 100 grams. It absorbs 1,255.0 joules of heat. Well, heat is Q. What is the corresponding temperature change? So what is delta T? The specific heat capacity of water as a solid is 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. So they've given me everything I need to solve my problem. So again, here's my formula. Q is equal to MC delta T. My Q is 1255.0 joules. My M is 100 grams. My C is 2.1 joules over grams degree Celsius and delta T is what I want to find. Well, if you look over here, my grams will cancel out, which leaves me with joules over degree Celsius. So again, for my algebra challenge friends, let's go ahead and simplify here. This gives me 210 joules over degree Celsius times delta T. And yes, I really need to rewrite this. All right, in order to get the delta T by itself, if I'm multiplying by 210, then I need to divide both sides by 210 joules over grams degree Celsius. So that'll give me delta T. That's gonna give me a big long number in my calculator, 5.9619, blah, 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 blah. Um, if I take a, a peek back here through my numbers, that's five sig figs, that's four sig figs. And be careful before you count this. I tell my students not to count it. It comes off a reference table. It's a standard number. It has an infinite number of sig figs, which is much larger than four and five. So your least number of sig figs is four. I would round it to four decimal places. So that means I'm going to keep the five the nine, the seven, and then I'm keeping the six. What's right beside of it is a one, so it, it stays the same. And then think about this right here. If I have joules divided by joules over a degree Celsius, when I divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as doing uh, multiplication with the reciprocal, like this. So if that's the case, joules goes away, and I'm left with degree Celsius. There's my answer. Now, the last problem that I have for you is still just a, a smidge different. Um, the problem says that you have a four, no, a 0 .400 kilogram block of iron. So, well, that's a mass. Mass is 0 .400 kilogram. It's heated from 22 to 55. Okay, for once, I don't have a, tel a delta T. If it's heated from 22, that means it started out at 22 degrees Celsius. And it's heated to 52, which means that's a final temperature. How much heat had to be transferred into the iron? So that's going to be my Q. Well, um, here's my equation. Q is equal to MC delta T. I have, I want to know Q, I have M, here's the two pieces together, this makes up my delta T, I'm missing my C, but not exactly, not so fast, because you have a reference table. So on your reference table, mine's shiny because it's laminated, 
um, I can find iron. My problem says it's iron. And if you look right there, you'll see that iron has a specific heat of 0.449 joules over grams degree Celsius. So we're going to use that C value, 0.449 joules over grams degree Celsius. So I'm ready to set it up. Q is going to equal, um, now, if I get ready to put 0.400 kilograms in here, I'm going to have a problem when it comes to canceling out my units, because this is kilograms, but this is grams. So I am going to have to convert this and make it 400 grams. Um, that's a whole separate video that needs to be made on doing conversion factors like that, but uh, one kilogram is a thousand grams, so I'm going to multiply it by a thousand. So I've got 400 grams times 0.449 joules over grams degree Celsius times 52 degrees Celsius minus 22 degrees Celsius. All right. And then we've got to do some number crunching here. That's um, going to be 400 times 0.449 times 30. I will get 5388. But now it's about sig figs. This one has three. It had three when it was in kilograms, so it's going to have three when it's in grams. That's why I put the decimal place there. So three sig figs. This doesn't count. It's a, it came off the reference table. I'm not counting it. It wasn't a measurement made. And then this, whenever I do sig figs with addition and subtraction, remember it's about place value. Those are both precise to the tenths place. So when I round it like this, this will really be 30 decimal. Like this zero has to be significant too because I know it to the ones place. So that has two sig figs. So my answer is only going to have two sig figs. That'll be 5,400. And the answer will be in joules because grams has canceled before. Degrees Celsius will cancel with the degrees Celsius over here because this comes out to be 30 degrees Celsius total. So I'm left with Q is equal to 5,400 joules. Now, my next video, I'm going to make these a little bit harder. So if you're looking for problems on how to do it where you set two Qs equal to each other, that's going to be the next video in line.